Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the different types of FMS resets and what they mean to the flight crew. Depending on when it occurs, a reset may be as simple as waiting on the FMS to process for a few seconds, all the way to having to scramble to recreate waypoints, a route, or even an entire flight plan. Modern FMSs have an incredible amount of computing power and run more lines of code than ever before. They simplify the crew's workload when everything runs smoothly, but they increase workload when they encounter problems. Today's segment will focus on how the FMSs are configured in dual and triple installation aircraft, the different types of resets and how each one impacts the flight crew, and finally, once a reset has occurred, how to troubleshoot it and determine the root cause. In a dual configuration cockpit, FMS-1 and FMS-2 operate most commonly in what's referred to as dual mode. This means they are synchronized where the selected FMS, based on what's pressed on the guidance panel selection, is the master and the secondary is a spare. In a triple FMS configuration, synchronous is the common mode where the selected FMS is the master, the secondary is the spare, and the third operates as a hot standby. The master FMS is coupled to the flight director and autopilot and is responsible for initiating changes to the other FMS unit. It drives the system. The spare FMS is synchronized with the master and capable of automatic promotion to become the master in the event of a failure. The standby FMS receives deferred periodic data from the master and is capable of being promoted to the synchronized pair. The FMS determines the master based on the primary flight display command button on the guidance panel. When a change is made on the guidance panel to select the other FMS as the master, the new spare then synchronizes the flight plan and the performance initialization with the new master. The standby will continue to receive periodic updates from the new master as well. Let's move on and talk about different types of resets. An FMS software reset occurs when an instruction fails to complete during its execution. This is referred to as a software exception or a software fault. The result of the reset will be evident to the operator in one of the four following ways. A warm start can be observed as sync in progress in the scratch pad of the FMS and should not cause a loss of the active FMS modes. Minimal data loss may occur, such as loss of data input that was occurring when the warm start occurred. It's important to note that sync in progress can be a normal message also when the FMS is syncing, so it may be difficult to determine a warm start from a normal message. A cold start or checkpoint recovery can be observed as an FMS with a one or two fail cast message, along with the FMS not being accessible for approximately one minute. If the master FMS is resetting, the flight director will drop LNAV if it's engaged, and the spare FMS will become the master. The FMS will recover in the same manner as a warm start, with no loss of flight plan or performance expected. If the spare FMS is the resetting FMS, the only observable impact will be the cast message. The cold start is the result of three software exceptions occurring within one minute of each other. The FMS is attempting to recover to a previously stored and stable state. A cold start full initialization can be observed like the cold start checkpoint recovery reset described before. However, upon recovery, the FMS will revert to the default power on state, meaning all the flight plan and performance data is cleared. This will occur if an additional software exception occurs within the one minute of the cold start checkpoint recovery reset. If the reset occurs only on one FMS, the synchronized data will be pushed back from the master automatically. A latch failure is observed as a permanent FMS1 or FMS2 fail cast message and the affected FMS shows unavailable on the MCDU display until power is cycled. A latch occurs if another reset occurs within one minute of the last cold start reset. The FMS is unusable during this time. It's possible that all three FMSs perform a cold start full initialization simultaneously and a complete loss of flight plan and performance data occurs. With any of these resets described above, if the FMS powers up normally during the next power cycle, continued operation is acceptable. At the end of a flight after a reset's occurred, it's recommended to select the clear flight plan prompt on the FMS, 
This ensures that the FMS data is stored into memory in what are referred to as the byte files. Provided FMS operation is restored after a power cycle, no additional maintenance action is required. If a reset occurs and root cause is desired, please notify Honeywell and or the OEM and provide the following required data. Download the FMS data via the Primus Epic Maintenance Utility, or PMOVE tool, using the Perform FMS Control D. Zip the downloaded files in the folders as they appear on the maintenance laptop. Download the Flight History Database zip file via the CMC RT to the maintenance laptop, being careful not to rename the file. When reporting the fault, the following information is required for root cause analysis. The specific date and time of the event. The more specific the operator can be in recording the time that the event occurred, the faster we can pinpoint it when reviewing the files. Additionally, please include a description of what occurred, as many flight plan details as possible, including the departure, destination, runways that were selected, SIDS, STARS, and approach. Also, the performance initialization data and any other pertinent info. Once we have this information, we can find root cause to determine what caused the reset and how to correct it in the future. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and safe flying.